Hogwarts Legacy was a fantastic game with lots of fun gameplay, brilliant music, a Hogwarts that was amazing to explore. And with a director's cut and a sequel on the way, there are some features that lacked in the original that I would love to see in a sequel. And these aren't original ideas, no, no, no. This video is all about going back to the past, back to those Potter games that people think were pretty terrible, when in all they weren't, except you, Death of Hell's Part 1. And taking a feature from each of one of those games, which I'd love to see in Hogwarts Legacy 2, or its director's cut. Before I do begin with this list, do let me know what you think guys, which features would you most like to see from the past Potter games. If you want to do what I'm doing and list each game out and say which feature you tick, do so. If it's just one particular feature from a game, let me know, I'll be excited to see and I may come back to this topic and put together a video of ideas you've put together in the comments. So do let me know all your thoughts, of course do like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. But yes, most people when hearing about the Harry Potter movie based games, just remember that the terrible. You know, they see PS1 Hagrid as a meme, they see Goblet of Fire or hear about Death of Hallows Part 1 they never played them. A lot of people do remember though, the three on PC, the first three on the PS2, the PS1 games. But even after that, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince had some quality and some fun gameplay mechanics that should have been in Hogwarts Legacy to make it more fun, to make it more immersive, just to add a bit to the game. Now. I'm not going to sit here and say Harry Potter and Foster Stone on the PlayStation 1 is a better game than Hogwarts Legacy, because it's not. But there are little features from each of those games. Some might be a bit cheap, uh, as you'll see, but some were definitely lacking and could have easily added to Hogwarts Legacy. So like I say, guys, we'll go start with Harry Potter and the Foster Stone on PS1 and then move through all the way to Deathly Hallows Part 2. So yeah, let's do this. So starting with... Harry Potter and the Foster Stone on PS1, the very first Harry Potter game I ever played all the way back in 2003, 21 years ago now. Of course it's PS1 Hagrid, Harry Potter, PS1 Hagrid, Hogwarts Legacy, it needs to be there. No, I'm kidding of course, it's amazing that he is in Hog um, Quits Champions but he doesn't need to be in. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy sequel or the director's cut. No, with this one it is hard because as great as that game was and as fun as that game was, there isn't many elements of the game that are there and it's like, yes, we need that in this in Hogwarts Legacy. But one that I'd love to see, and it's like I say, some of these early ones might be a bit cheap, it's Quidditch. Quidditch was in Harry Potter and the Fourth Stone on PS1. Yes, it wasn't great. Yes, it wasn't amazing. You sort of fly like a snail. It's all very slow and monotonous. But it's in there. You got to play as Harry as the Seeker. You got to play three games if you completed 100%. There was a Quidditch League in the main menus. It wasn't at all in Hogwarts Legacy. So if we could have one feature from Harry Potter and the Fourth Stone PS1, and it's not PS1 Hagrid, I'm going to be taking Quidditch all day long. Is there anything else from that game you may think we could have? Maybe it's something I'll mention later on, but yeah, like I say, do let me know. On to its PC counterpart. So, Harry Potter and the Foster Stone on the PC. It actually had something taken from that game, or very similar, and implementing Hogwarts Legacy. And that was how you learnt spells in that game, how you drew the sort of shape. That is something you did in the very first Potter game on PC, where you drew the shape of Flipendo, or Lumos as a Moon Crescent, or Wingardium Leviosa with a W. So they already had something from that game in there, which was really, really cool. Um, but no. Next up, I would love to see the return of Wizard Cards. Obviously, it was a collectible in all the Potter games up to Prison of Azkaban. They were so fun to collect. You know, you could trade, you could swap. It was just a fun collectible. And I liked the collectibles, especially the field pages about the little extra things in Hogwarts and beyond. But there's nothing can be an original collectible of a Wizard Card. You know, Bertie Box Beans were brilliant, but the Wizard Cards were just so fun. And I love making them bonus videos, learning about the other wizards. And you could have so many in the game. It doesn't even have to be 101, it could be more. You know, because I'm pretty sure there is more. So yeah, bring back famous witches and wizard cards. I'd love to see that. Again, these earlier ones, a bit 
harder to think because they were quite basic, but they're still amazing fun games. There's one more Foster Stone game to do, and it is Foster Stone on the PlayStation 2. Again, this game came out in 2003, was actually a bit of a remake, based off Chamber of Secrets PlayStation 2, fitting the story of Foster Stone. It came out in 2003, and it did have a few of the things we've mentioned, obviously, already. Um, Quidditch, it had famous Witch and Wizard cards, and again, obviously, if the most basic stuff were probably in Hogwarts, like I said, but one thing this game does have, and a lot of the early Potter games had, which I'd love to see again, in Hogwarts Legacy 2 or a director's cut and it was planned to be in there apparently and a lot of people were clamming for it was house points again house points you have the house cup obviously in the first book it's all about being Slytherin they've won it six years in a row they're going for seven it can't possibly happen and a lot of the early games for the PS1 the PC the PS2 games all had house points and you all fought for that house cup so again I'd love to see the return of house points, the house cup being a bit of a prominent thing, you know, points taking off if you're caught after dark, etc, etc. So yeah, going with house points for this one. So now we're going to move on to Chamber, and obviously Chamber also had three versions, so we're going to ramble about them a bit. So moving on to the second story, the second book, the second game as it were, on to Chamber PS1, and it was quite similar to Foster Stone, it did add a few things, it took a few things away. And one thing it had, but Foster Stone also had, but I wanted to mention it for this one, is Diagonally. Diagonally was in this game, and I know we got the little Gringotts section in uh, Hogwarts Legacy, but I'd love to be able to explore um, Diagonally, go around, you know, have a few missions there, be able to visit there again. Obviously, that wasn't possible in, in this game, you just went there for like one mission to get a few supplies for the Polyjuice Potion. But it did have Diagon Alley, you could walk around, there's a few shops you could go into, some of them had the funny puns where they were shut, you know, Nocturne Alley wasn't available again, so if you were a dark arts person in this game, you could go into Nocturne Alley. But yeah, I would love to explore them areas of of the Wizzy World, you know, I understand obviously it's quite far away, but if you get on the, the Hogwarts Express or something, they'd be able to make it work, or if there's a you know, flu powder thing, anything like that. So for Chamber of Secrets PS1, it would be going to Diagon Alley. Now, with Chamber PC, I'm going for something that was technically sort of in Hogwarts Legacy, but I'd love to see expanding on a lot more, and that is the Dueling Club. So you had Cross Wands in Hogwarts Legacy, where I think you do, what, two, maybe three duels max? I think it's two, and then you have, obviously, the training dummy. Hogwarts Legacy, I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing, it's going to be duels in other villages, other places, you know, it's going to be a, a proper dueling club, but no, again, it was very short and sweet and it was over very quickly. Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets PC, you could play for beans, you know, the currency in the game, and there was at least 10 to 11 duels, and you could actually replay them at any time to get more duels. So it was more, I'm not saying the dueling was better, but the actual premise of having a bigger dueling club is better than what was shown in Hogwarts Legacy. So I'd love to see an extended dueling club, either at Hogwarts, you know, with all four houses, a bit similar to Heart Blood Prince, because I'm choosing something a bit different for there, or obviously in the, each hamlet, village, just different area, there's like a dueling champion of their place. It's a bit like Pokemon, you go travel around, try and become the dueling champion of each place. I'd love to see that. But again, moving on to Chamber PS2, which is actually one of my favourite Potter games, and I think something a lot of people would have wanted in that. So Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on PlayStation 2, considered met by many, including me, one of the better Potter games, and one of the best in my opinion. And with this one, it is in a few of the other Potter games, and it was in for like one mission in, or two missions in Hogwarts Legacy. Um, and it's stealth at night, and having consequences of being caught out at night. So you had it when you're trying to sneak into the library. And then there's also the one where you're trying to, you know, you, you first unlocked about the, the demiguise moons for um, the caretaker. Um, what's that? I forgot his name. Is he called Mr. Moon? I think he is. Um, they're the only two times where you had to use stealth, you know, use uh, your delumination spell and try and avoid people and there was consequences you went back to the start. But I'd love to see it in all of the nights of so prefects patrolling around the castle. You can't go to see it at certain places because of it. If you get caught, 10 points off your house. Stuff like that, just like that was in Chamber of Secrets PS2. Um, I just don't know why. It seemed like, oh, again, this is, it started off like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then it just vanishes halfway through the game. Or, well, two missions in sort of thing. It's really weird. So, again, yeah, having that stealth at night, the patrolling, the, the lockdown of a castle, you know, if it's knights, if it's prefects, if it's teachers, whatever it is, have that as a thing just to make it a bit more harder, a, 
and giving it a bit more life of Hogwarts because I think that's something that game does miss and that'll be, that's another video entirely which I'm going to definitely make. But yeah, definitely give us that. So now moving on to Prisoner of Azkaban which didn't have a PS1 version so we're going to be looking at the PS2 and the PC version of that game. So first up, Prisoner of Azkaban PC, it's not one of my favourite Potter games, it's very short, there's a lot missing, a lot left to be desired, especially after Chamber PC, but it was a bit of a backward step, but they do have the end of year exams, so, and you kept hearing about the owls and things in um, Hogwarts Legacy, and you just never got to take any exams, it was just like a cutscene, and they could have, you know, the writing was fair enough, but the interactive exams, you could have fitted in. Um, and I do like how they have them in Prisoner PC, you know, they're quite fun, especially the one where you've got to use Jaconophus and Lapiforce as Hermione. The end of year exams were, they added more of a game, they added to length, and obviously it's a school, there's going to be tests, there's going to be exams, yeah, you have your lessons and things. Uh, so I did enjoy that there were active exams, so I'd definitely love to see them. Um, in Hogwarts Legacy, so at the end of the year or through the year, just like mock tests or at the end of the year, like some final tests, you know, a bit like how Looping had an interactive um, sort of uh, uh, trench core sort of thing where he, you had to battle a lot of things and your know, Harry's the only one who did it. You could easily have that in a video game. That's like video game one of one, having like all these enemies that you battle through the game being thrown at you at the end. Easy, easy, sort of like a, a trench course of that. I'd love to see that. So yeah, from Prisoner PC, I'm taking the exams. So yes, Prisoner PS2 was another fun game. It's one of the last better Potter games, obviously, of that sort of animated 3D universe with the open exploration of Hogwarts. And this was the first time though you had Ron Hermione always with you, you could switch and play them. And I don't want to be switching to play other characters, no, no, no. But I would like the fact how you always have them with you, they were always there to explore. You know, Hogwarts, like I say, people really wanted to be at selecting. It is a mod now where you can select someone to come with you, so a Sebastian, a Natty, you know, even some of the teachers in the mods. I'd love that to have that sort of, when you just explore, you just have a companion with you, you know, when you go to the Forbidden Forest or you're know, tackling a dangerous area, to be able to have some of you all times to help. That was all a really good thing in Chamber, especially compared to like Prisoner, uh, sorry, in Prisoner compared to Chamber of Officers where Harry was alone um, and there was no one ever really to help him. Being able to have like swarms coming at you and having someone with you was really good. Um, and obviously just having voices, you know, it's quite lonely sometimes just exploring around and it's just quiet. Having someone there just talking at times, again, adds a bit to it. So yeah, I'd definitely love to add like the companionship roles of of Prisoner and expand upon it for a Hogwarts Legacy sequel or its director's cut. Now we're moving on to Goblet and this is where it became a bit tricky for me. So let's see how I do. So I've made no secret that I would love the next game to be a bit of an anthology and go back to one of the Triwizard tournaments. But I'm not going to be saying that because I feel that seems a bit cheap. But I would like co-op. This game was the first Potter game to have co-op. You could play with a friend sat next to you, and obviously you could probably do that online now. So why not have co-op? Um, yeah, you friend can come in, and you can just explore the world, or you know, if there's not many local play co-ops anymore, is there with games? And that is a bit weird. Obviously, Quidditch Champions doesn't have local play co-op. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see the co-op element where you can invite a friend and their character come join. It doesn't really impact the story. A bit like Saints Row where there's just two of you, but it's like there is one of you. Um, or even adding like a co-op sort of challenge mode where you can, there's challenges specifically for co-op. Again, Goblet had it. It was the only Potter game to actually have a co-op uh, two-player mode. Um, and it wasn't the best of games, you know, there's not many things other than that I'd take from it. So yeah, uh, again, if there's anything you think from Goblet where I'm like, you know what, it was terrible, but it had bits, do let me know. And yeah, like I say, I may, I may come back to this topic and make a video of your guys' ideas. But moving on to all the other things, which to me, this and Half-Blood were the easiest of the two to pick up. Yes, we need them. Order of the Phoenix, number five, and this was one I was banging on the drum about. Obviously, it's easily my favourite Potter game. Um, I've just recently, I'm currently doing my bonus pass, but I've recently finished the walkthrough, so go and check that out. But the game had amazing mini games: Gobstone's Chess and Exploding Snap. And though it's so, you know, the Exploding Snap quite basic. Gobstone's was fun. Um, the only hard sort of one was the traditional, and Chess was Chess. Um, but Wizard's Chess is such a staple of it, Gobstones is, you know, Exploding Snap, it's all these sort of like mini games and things that make it feel like a school, that make it feel live, that make it feel like people are doing stuff, where you can just sit down, forget about the main story for a bit, you know, Umbridge being a 
bitch and just play some cobstones or whatnot. And like games like Red Dead, GTA do it really well, especially like Red Dead with it's like poker, it's five finger feeler, obviously the liars dice where it's just like yeah you're being a cowboy and I've had you know you know I just wanna go to a bar and play some of that and just take your mind off it for a bit. Hogwarts Legacy really did miss that sort of small touch details of Hogwarts of being a student of student life. So without a doubt, the thing I'd take from Order of the Phoenix would be the mini game, sort of like just to make it feel more alive and, and more fun, I guess. Yeah, more fun. On to Half-Blood Prince. Basically the last good Potter game, even you know, at a stretch, I feel Order of the Phoenix was way better than this one. Um, this one I like sometimes called half ass mini games, you know, half ass pr prints uh, rather than half blood prints. But one thing it was good at, its Julian was broke, it was rubbish, its Quidditch was boring, and we've already said uh, about them two things. But the one thing that it was good was the potion making. And some people might not agree, but I did find the potion making the game really fun, you know, how it was interactive, how you poured it, how you uh, stirred, how you bubbled it up, heated it up, all that stuff. And Again, I feel like Hogwarts Legacy could have easily had this where you actually make the potions yourself. Yeah, and once you've made it one time, maybe there is a thing where you can then start to, in the room requirement, um, do it. Or even if you are making it, you still have to wait that 10, 15 minutes in the room requirement for it to bubble. And you you know, it's just to make it, again, it's a really fun method, I thought. And it's just more interactive, it makes it more immersive. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed making potions in that game. I find it really fun. Um, and, you know, if the first time you play it, it can be quite tense, but obviously after a while you get used to it and you know what you're doing. Um, so yeah, I'd happily have the potion making system from Half-Blood coming back into a Hogwarts Legacy sequel. And now onto the real struggle, the two Deathly Hallows games, which were, let's just put it, shit. But I'm going to find a feature I'd like, I promise. Now I loved the collectibles, especially the Pottermore, um, the Potter Watch collectibles, sorry my friend George was doing my radio show, but I think we've already talked about a bit of collectibles with um, the wizard card, so I'm going to dodge that and I'm going to say the challenges, yes they weren't amazing, but it adds something to the game, I think Hogwarts Legacy could easily have some challenges in the main menu, outside the thing, like I said we caught where you can have them. Obviously, if it was a top 1000, and I, I'm currently in the top 1000 for a few of the challenges I was trying to do for a platinum run. Um, and yeah, so some of them were fun, some of them weren't. You know, some, you know, they were just part of a mission from the game, or some were brand new where you had to escape a certain area. You know, the, the challenges from the main menus, well, they might not be amazing or brilliant. They added something of a game, they padded it out, you know, there was more stuff to do. And I think Hogwarts Legacy could easily have some challenges, you know, with the broom races outside the main menu or, you know, with waves of enemies, you know, just things like that. But just to spruce it up and, you know, have a leaderboard like a top 1000. I'd love to be in the top 1000 for something on Hogwarts Legacy. Trust me, I would. You know, things like the... Um, you know, the Dark Arts Arena, there, there are challenges in the game, but to have it as a separate, its own separate thing and create specialised challenges, it'd be something I'd love to see. Uh, and like I say, with these games, I'm a bit scratching up the barrel, um, so do forgive me. Moving on to Deathly Hallows Part 2, the final game. I won't be doing the Lego games, just because they're amazing and a bit different. So here we are, the last game, and I thought it might be a bit hard to think of something for Deathly Hallows Part 2, but no, because I remembered it has a new game plus. So... You can't unlock the highest difficulty on your first playthrough, but you do unlock it when you complete the game. And you can then play the game with all the spells, all the abilities from the get-go. And this is something Hogwarts Legacy is working on, but I'd love to see something at the start of the game. So I don't know why we have to wait a little bit sometimes. I'd love to see it at the start of games, like that game did. So you could have Apparition, you have all the spells you've learned, you know, obviously, and you need the Apparition to get to a certain collectible in one of the levels you couldn't get before. So a new game plus is in Deathly Hallows Part 2, and I completely forgot until making this video. So yes, I would love to see new game plus taken from... Deathly Hallows Part 2 and a myriad of other games, but in the Potter series, Deathly Hallows Part 2, and put it to Hogwarts Legacy. And, and there we go, gone through all the mainstream games on console and PC, give it, taking features. Is this being a fun video? I've definitely enjoyed talking about it, thinking about different scenarios. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have been thinking about, what you have in plan, if there are any features from other games I missed that you'd implement, do let me know. And like I said, I will come back and do this again, maybe closer to the time after Hogwarts Legacy 2's news, things like that. But do leave a like, subscribe, comment, share, and I'll see you all later for another Harry Potter video. Bye-bye.